Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can add a WatchGuard AP into WatchGuard Cloud, the new Wi-Fi 6 ones that we've just released. So what you need to do is to go to WatchGuard Cloud and in here I have an account already created. Under that account, uh, you can see I will go into my inventory and that inventory I'm able to see that I have unallocated APs. So I have three of these APs unallocated. Now, before I bring these in, I'm actually going to create a template for my account to actually you know, do my SSID. So it's very simple. I go to configure, access points, obviously making sure I'm click clicked on the account. And I'm going to create the site. Now the site is where the APs are going to be located. So I'm going to call this uh, corp and description is HQ. Uh, click next and what this does is it means I can go in here and start the template with things like if I need to do a radio server I can add that in here if they need a captive portal I can add that here but the main thing is the SSIDs so the first SSID is uh, the corp network it's a private network I'm going to have it transmit on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and I'm going to have it set to use WPA3 and WPA2 personal uh, set a password for it there we go. Uh, I'm not going to actually use a VLAN, but I would always recommend you use a VLAN because that's the best way to actually do it. Uh, notice here I'm using bridging, so that means that the local network will supply it with its IP addressing for the DHCP. Uh, otherwise, I would be using that where I hide behind the AP on that side. Access control, this is for MAC address locking down. Shouldn't really need to use that in this day and age. Uh, scheduling when I want to transmit now, as you know from previous videos, I would always recommend you should only transmit when you really need it. So I would always say to you, transmit it, you know, only during the office hours and stuff like that. Traffic shaping, this is where we can actually say how much bandwidth we can have. So a bandwidth per client, you know, one, two, three megs or whatever. So there is a rule of thumb on that one on how much bandwidth you want to allow. But for this, I'm just gonna allow it all through. And under advanced, I shouldn't need to change much here, but as you can see, it's already got the protective management frame enabled. That's the most crucial thing because that is to do with the WPA3 side, the more secure way of protecting things. Now I'm also going to enable band steering because I want my clients to switch from 2.4 to five gigahertz. And I'm not enabling client isolation because I'm not setting up a guest network on this particular SSID. <clears throat> so I'm going to go add on that so I now have my corp network and if I want to add a guest network it's very simple I do repeat the same so I'm going to call it guest but the difference here I'm going to select guest on this one <coughs> with selecting guest I drop it down to my same again WPA3 set my password that I want to use on that guest Wi-Fi Obviously, we would definitely recommend that you use the NAT, uh, either NAT or a VLAN, a separate VLAN, so you can actually control the traffic. But on here, I'm actually going to say, right on this, I'm going to do bandwidth throttling, and I'm pretty evil. I'm going to say two megs and two megs per client. Lovely. And I'm also going to go to the advanced side, and it's done the bit I wanted it to do, which is the client isolation. And then I'm going to do the band steering as well. So, lovely. I'm going to click add and that one, and then I can go back. So I've, cre I've created my SSIDs, I've got a template for it. I'm not bothering with the domains and I'm not bothering with the VPN side because all I'm there's videos for that if you want to see that and the captive portal. So it says I have undeployed save changes, so I'm gonna deploy this and call it uh, basic uh, uh, install. And there I'm gonna go deploy. Lovely. Now, obviously it's not deployed to anything because there's no APs connected to it. So let's bring my APs in. So I go back to my overview and I click inventory. Under inventory, I go to unallocated. And unallocated, I see my three APs that I've got. These ones here sitting, one of them is actually sat on a stand. And I'm actually going to add that to my account. So I'm gonna drop it down and add to the account. Now I have the ability if I want, to actually say when they should expire. I, it's an account I have with a customer, but for me, I'm just gonna say never at this moment in time. Click save. And that's save that one. Let's do the next one. Down again, save. And then finally on this one, I'm gonna not, I'm gonna do the same again and click save. Oh, I didn't select account. There we go, select account and save. 
So now my APs are waiting for them to be picked up. So all I need to do now is go to monitor devices and click on the actual account. Then from there, I actually have down here at the bottom, it says add device. So I'm going to click on add device. And from there, it always defaults to firewalls because you know you can. This is exactly the same process you do for a firewall as well. But for the APs, I'm just going to click here and go access points. And now I'm going to add these APs. Now, unfortunately, right now you can't bring them all in by just ticking them, but that will be coming soon. But I'm just going to click on this and go bring this device in. Add now at this point. I could change the name of the device. I can say that device is located on the ground floor or anything like that. But the main important thing for me is the time zone. So London, next. I'm going to say use the HTTP IP address or I could set a static IP address or a VLAN or whatever on that one. But I'm going to use the um, DHCP, click next. And then the site. Now this is the site that I configured earlier. It's there ready for me. I can drop down, click next. The only other thing I need here is a password if I need to get CLI access onto the device for anything. So let me just set that. So that's that one set. And that will go ahead and actually save that into the cloud. So that one's done. And all I'm going to do is now go ahead and repeat the same process again by adding the other APs in. As I said, later in next year, we'll have the ability to bring them all in together at once. So next, next on that one, thank you very much. Uh, the site is there, next, and the password. Done. And that will bring that in. And I just repeat it finally with the third one. So let's do the last one. Add device, drop it down, do, 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 do. next, same again, DHCP, corp network, next. Now, once that's been added, that's all my APs in there. I can see them and I've also got a folder that I had already created earlier. So for those that don't know how to do that, I'll just delete the folder and I'll add that back in again. So I'll go add, create a new folder, call it access points, create. And now all I'm gonna do is just drag and drop my APs into that folder. All I need to do now is actually plug the APs in, connect it, and it will pull down that config. What will happen is on the actual APs, the bar will be red when it's not connected to WatchGuard Cloud, but once it's connected, it will go blue. And that's it. That's how you bring APs into WatchGuard Cloud. Hope that's helped. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.